On this episode of The Rugged Homestead, I'm going to show how I use my chickens to make compost. The girls have been an active part of my uh, composting system here and they've gotten really big. They're what, about four or five months old now and with only four they've been pretty active. So as you can see around the yard here there's a lot of uh, stuff you might not even be able to really tell and that's because the chickens really do a heck of a job tearing up uh, the food scraps that we give them. Now I saw this uh, method on Edible Acres. Check out uh, the website there. They've got a ton of information on permaculture, uh, growing uh, chickens, using the chickens for composting. And that's what I'm gonna show you. Sean has a much bigger system than I've got here. He's got, I don't know, dozens and dozens of uh, chickens. As you can see, I have just got four. And uh, they actually do uh, uh, just a, a perfect amount of work for me and give me just enough compost that I can use in my garden and around my uh, uh, plantings. There's really four different stages. This is the main area where all the new food scraps come in. They get piled up here, they get covered with uh, grass clippings and then get covered with hay. Uh, the chickens knock that down and uh, over time, it works its way through the system, which is down this way, and then over to the finished pile over there. What happens is after the first week and uh, the chickens have gone through all the food scraps, it's all picked up and piled here where it's allowed to uh, continue uh, decomposing and the chickens continue working through it. After the third week, it's picked up from here and moved over to here, which is the pre-finished uh, pile. And they uh, continue to work on it every uh, Every day, they're always scratching through. And then at the start of the fourth week, the pile is then moved from over here to over there. And it's pretty much finished. By the end of the fourth week in particular, the uh, compost is pretty good. I mean, all the food scraps are gone. You get a little bit of hay still left in there, but this is pretty good uh, compost here. And the chickens are still going through it. But what I do, once I move the pile from here to week two's starting point here, I then go back and I add new fresh food scraps to the uh, beginning pile. The chickens knock it down and then uh, I build it back up once or twice during the week. And then uh, the next week, the pile that was here then gets moved over to here. The pile that's there is moved over to here. And then the following week, the whole process starts all over again. New food comes in. The pile that was, let's see, where were we? The pile that was here gets moved to here. The pile that was there gets moved to here. And then new scraps come in. So it just, every week, the process just works all the way through. Now, this week in particular, there's really no separation, which usually doesn't happen. You usually have like a break in between, but they've been apparently really uh, scrounging through this uh, pile. So uh, right now, what I'm going to do is, of course, today, I'm gonna to be bringing new uh, uh, food scraps in. I'm gonna be moving all the piles all the way through. So the first thing I'll be doing is setting up the pen. This is about a 20 by 20 foot area at most, maybe less. And it's partially taken up by the uh, coop in the run too. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is uh, prepare for the addition of the foods, food scraps. What I'm gonna do is start with week three's pile right over here, and I'm gonna move it over to week four's pile. This is almost finished compost here, and it'll get finished over there. Then I'm gonna take week three's pile, I'm sorry, week two's pile, and move it down to week three. And then I'll take what's left of up here and move it over here.
just to show you, this is pretty well composted down. You know, there's some hay here and stuff, and there's some wood chips and things like that. But what I do is I have to use it when it's finished and there's still some like large pieces or whatever. I'll either use this as like a side dressing in the garden, as is, because large chunks help to aerate the soil and things like that, so it's not uh, terrible to have them in there. Uh, or if I'm going to use it for maybe starting seeds or some other application, I will screen it. And I have a sifter that I use to get out all the big chunks and things like that. But as you can see, this is still pretty good stuff right here. And this is three weeks from having been raw food. This is raw vegetables, grass clippings, and hay. So it's good, but it's gonna get better. And as you can see, the chickens do like to go through there. They, uh, once I start digging it up, they start scratching up again too. This is primarily where last week's pile was. So the, you can see it's slightly mounted there, but I just take it and go through. And sometimes it's just easier to use the shovel than the pitchfork when it's broken down this much. And you can see, it does break down pretty quickly. Also, you can see here, I got some big food scraps. And if they're still there, by the time they're in the week four pile, they'll just get uh, sifted out or picked out. And they'll be thrown back at the top of the, uh, the pile again to continue breaking down and work their way uh, through the system until they're finally decomposed. So now what I'll do is I'll take, I'll take last week's pile of what's left of the food scraps and I'll move it onto the week two pile now. And you can see there's not much food scraps there. And there was a big pile of uh, uh, vegetable uh, waste in that uh, spot. Um, but it's been eaten up, decomposed down. Now, what I'm gonna do is just move that pile down and then that'll be prepared for when I go get the uh, food scraps. Not that the chickens often need it, but to encourage them to uh, uh, scrounge around the piles, and usually when they're first turned over, there's no need to encourage them at all to do anything, because you're picking up bugs and things like that, and they just like going through it and being interested in it. But during the week, to keep them interested, I give them some scratch, and just throw like a handful on each pile, and that encourages them to uh, scrounge around. I even throw some on the uh, week four pile, the finish pile. Again, it encourages them to continue scratching through. So now that the piles are ready and the space is uh, ready, I'll get a, uh, my bag of uh, food scraps from the vegetable store, and then I'll add the grass clippings that I cut from my front lawn. Because my backyard is all covered in uh, wood chips, I don't have a grass, I don't have any grass to cut in the back. And so I have a small front lawn, I don't know, what, about 50 feet wide, about 25 feet deep. And uh, it provides enough grass clippings uh, to help the decomposition process. So I'll go get them and show you how I pile it up. I'm here at the fruit and vegetable store. I gotta pick up the uh, vegetables and just figured I'd show you uh, the whole process of me dumpster diving and everything. I probably shouldn't have to dumpster dive. The people that own this fruit and vegetable store are actually uh, friends of the family. I've just never gone in there and asked them uh, if I could uh, go and take their uh, 
uh, waste. And I probably should. <laughs> that way they could actually put it aside for me rather than have to go uh, dive it in the dumpster. But uh, let's go because I like to do my little ninja work. I wait till the store closes, come here. It's all uh, piled up in the uh, dumpster. And uh, so it looks like more of a mess today than it's uh, been in the past. A lot of boxes uh, out there. It looks like they were doing some uh, uh, fruit platters or so because I see a lot of tops of uh, pineapple. So here we go. All right. Let's see. It's a bigger mess than it uh, normally is. But, uh, yeah, these, these heavy bags, that's fruit. I always tell the, the where the fruit is. This is kind of light, so let's see. Light, respectively speaking. But uh, as you can see, looks like it's got uh, some cilantro or parsley in there. So we'll take that one. We'll just throw that in there out of the truck and I'll try to find another one. Yes. There it is there. A lot of pomegranates in here. And we got a lot of pomegranates. my way around to the other side. And I see, okay, in this one I see radishes and uh, cucumbers and cabbage. So we'll take this one too. So that's what I do, go through there and just try to uh, find the uh, vegetables that are in there. All right, let's go back and put it on the uh, the compost pile. Okay, we have chickens uh, curious as to what I've brought with them uh, this week. So I got the, the two bags. One had, uh, I saw like radishes and things in it. The other one, uh, cucumbers and cabbage. And then uh, the other one had uh, parsley and stuff like that. <laughs> so they're really curious as to what we've got here. So what I do is I have a bucket here because there is some trash in there too. So I sort out the trash when I can. Always use a pair of gloves so I don't uh, get the crud all over uh, my hands. Don't know what's in there. So let's get to it. Usually what I'll do is I'll just take the bags, uh, dump them out, and then sort out the garbage. Yeah, so it looks like we got a lot of parsley or cilantro in here. A lot of these trays, so this is what I pull out. You got a bunch of carrot peels in here. And it looks like uh, some zucchini along with uh, corn husks and some uh, squash in there as well, I see. Like this one had a lot of radish in it, but it also has a lot of plastic too. But we'll pick all that out. All right, looks like all the uh, the plastic. Now the next thing I put in is I cover this with the long clippings. Yep, just a bag of long clippings like this, and I sprinkle it over the whole top. Make sure, or I try to cover as much of that as possible. Uh, 
Now the reason I do it in this method, because I actually put the grass clippings one time down first and then the uh, vegetables on top and the clippings got all matted down and they didn't uh, break down really all that well. And in about a couple of days it was actually starting to stink. So I ended up coming through and mixing it all up and within a day or two it, uh, the smell was gone. But by putting it this way, for one, the chickens love the, uh, the grass clippings, but then they also start digging through the grass clippings to get down to the uh, vegetables underneath. So it mixes it all together, and I think it helps uh, break it down faster. And then the last thing I do is I cover it all with hay. Of course, the phone battery died before, uh, as I was showing you the, uh, the next step, which would be putting the uh, hay on top of everything. So, show you. The chickens have already knocked the hay off the uh, pile, and they're down to the grass and vegetables again. But uh, that's just a bale of alfalfa hay that I use. A friend gave it to me when I started uh, keeping the chickens. He's kept chickens for years. So he got it from uh, uh, Tractor Supply, and uh, it's alfalfa hay. So I'm running low, so I'll probably have to go get another bale soon. But uh, as I said, I just cover everything with the uh, straw, and the chickens then and just mix everything up by uh, scratching at it and picking and uh, pecking and eating. So uh, I don't just feed the chickens this uh, feed here or the, the food scraps uh, Sean at Edible Acres I think just wholly uh, feeds his chickens um, the scraps I mean he's got uh, I think 60 plus chickens and uh, he's got a ton of food coming in all the time as I said I kind of regulate the amount of food I bring in so I do have uh, feed that I give them just to make sure that they do have food that they will eat on hand and usually in the morning that's what they go to they'll eat the uh, feed and then they'll go out and then they'll start scratching and pecking and eating the rest of it and maybe once or twice uh, during the day they'll go back to the feed and eat just a little bit but that's the process so we start up there with the food scraps week two it gets moved to this pile week three it goes to here and it's breaking down each time and by the end of this week it should this pile right here should be pretty good uh, decomposed and then we move it over to there in week four and it's uh, basically uh, compost at that point by the end of the week that could be used as hey, 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 hey. whoa <laughs> holy shit <laughs> he's never done this before <laughs> up on my arm <laughs> it flew up here how you doing how you doing <laughs> Uh, hold on just a, hold on just a second Alrighty then <laughs> so we've got him back in the pen and he's uh pecking away at the food oh all right like i said he's never done that before so <laughs> over here this is the finished compost and as you can see i'm starting to let it pile up there and that's fine and uh it'll continue to break down and just keep adding more uh ending compost uh, to it and then uh, before the end of the year, I'll probably take it out and uh, Use it in the garden elsewhere around the yard. There's, I got a ton of places. I really can use all this. So that's the uh, chicken composting system. I Stole it completely from uh, edible acres. So all credit goes to him and anything I'm doing wrong Although can you really do anything wrong? But whatever I'm doing wrong blame goes to me. All right, if you like what you see give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you don't already do so and hit that alarm button and that way you'll be notified right away when videos like this are posted and you can keep track of how I'm turning my suburban home into a homestead okay thanks for watching